Mineo Kubo was born in Riverside, California on June 27, 1912. Her mother, Mio Okubo, had been an honors student and graduate of Tokyo Art Institute and encouraged her children to pursue artistic careers. After Riverside Poly High School, Mineo Kubo enrolled at Riverside Junior College and was awarded a fellowship by the University of California, Berkeley. She enrolled there for a bachelor's and master's of fine arts degree. After graduation, she took a job with the Federal Art Project, a branch of the New Deal era Works Progress Administration, assisting on the painting of murals for the Servicemen's Hospitality House in Oakland when Executive Order 9066 was issued. Mine and brother Toku were confined at Tanferan Detention Center, then moved to Topaz War Relocation Center. The heads of the family and the uh, uh, single persons were ordered to report and uh, register. And we were given our family number and tag. We were told what to bring and what not to bring and uh, told what to wear for pioneer life in camp. We had three days and three nights to pack and get ready. Some of the things uh, we left some of the things we uh, gave away, and some of the things we stored was the government. Baggages were heaped high on the sidewalks for blocks. Buses were lined up in the street for blocks. We lined up single file, paraded in front of everybody, and entered the bus. The gods were still standing, and the friends were waving goodbye to us, and the public was gawking. We crossed the Bay Bridge in silence, traveled several miles south, and arrived at the Tanfran Assembly Center. As it entered, we saw heaps of uh, baggages with family names dumped here and there. The bus drove in front of the grandstand, and we got out and uh, we were searched for a contraband. Straight-edged razor and knives and liquor. And then we went to the registration table and were assigned our stable, 16, and stall, 50. The guide then took us across the center field to our stable and stall. We went inside to the dark, dimly lit back part and saw two army cots against the wall. My brother opened one and I opened the other and we sat in the dark looking at each other. By then it was 10 o'clock and um, we decided we'll hit the hay. But it turned out so cold that we finally had to open everything in the bags and the suitcases and spread it on top of us. We could hear every noise, but we were so tired that finally about 12 o'clock fell asleep. That was our first uh, night in camp. While at Topaz, Okubo taught art classes and drew cover designs and illustrations for the literary review Trek. Since incarcerates were not allowed cameras, she documented her time there through drawings. She produced over 1,000 sketches of life in camp. In early 1943, her drawing of Camp Sentries won a prize in a show at the San Francisco Museum of Art and appeared in the San Francisco Chronicle. The Chronicle's editors commissioned a set of her camp sketches as a feature for their Sunday magazine, This World. The editors of Fortune magazine saw this and hired Okubo to work on a special issue on Japan. Okubo's camp sketches in Fortune caused a sensation. The San Francisco Museum of Art hosted a special exhibit of the original artwork by Okubo in August 1944 while she was still incarcerated. With the help of Fortune magazine, 
Okubo was able to leave Topaz in 1944 and settle in New York. The magazine's editors found her a studio apartment in Greenwich Village. She continued to live there and work until her death. After Topaz, Okubo arranged her sketches in order and drafted text for each sketch. Columbia University Press published the work Citizen 13660 in September 1946. It told of Okubo's forced removal and life at Tanforan and Topaz. It was the first book-length account on America's concentration camps from the perspective of a former incarcerate. In Citizen 13660, Okubo captured how World War II and the subsequent incarceration changed her life. In 1983, a reprint edition of Citizen 13660 was released with a new introduction by the author. It won an American Book Award. The new edition achieved the status of an Asian American classic at the same time Okubo became increasingly active in the Japanese-American redress movement. In 1983, she testified before the U.S. Commission on Wartime Relocation and Internment of Civilians and offered a copy of Citizen 13660 as evidence. In 